This is MathGuide.com and my name is Mark Caridimos. Today we're going to take a look at the distance formula. Within this video we are going to have several sections. Uh, the first thing we're going to talk about is what the distance formula is. We're going to make a connection to the Pythagorean theorem. Uh, we're going to do an example of how to calculate a distance with an example and uh, of course we'll have a second example after that. Okay, let's get started. All right, this is our uh, first section of our video. Uh, you can see here up on the screen we have the distance formula, and uh, you should notice that it does have uh, what are called subscripts. So those little subscripts like x sub 2 and x sub 1, those just indicate that we're dealing with different x values. And the same thing is true for the y sub 2 and the y sub 1. Uh, it, you know, those subscripts are different than the powers. Powers are written up high and to the right. Subscripts are written down to the lower right. Okay, well, why do we use them? Well, uh, anytime we're trying to find the distance, um, you're really trying to find the length of a segment given its endpoints. So even though it's not said in the formula, we're assuming that we're dealing with two points. So our first point would be x1, y1, and the second point would be x2, y2. Now, we use the subscript so we could see that there is a difference between our first x value and our second x value, and our first y value and our second y value. So that's why we use subscripts to distinguish the difference between two points. All right, this is our second section. All right, so let's say we are dealing with two points, x1, y1, and x2, y2. Uh, all right, well, first of all, what you would do is you would graph these two points. So let's say you did have these two points, and uh, I'm going to assume it looks like this. And here's our x2, y2. All right, so uh, I'm going to connect these, make a uh, segment out of the two. So we do have the two endpoints of the segment, and we're going to calculate the distance. Well, I already have the formula, but I want to show the connection that this formula has with the Pythagorean theorem. And that's all this is. This, as you'll see in a moment, that this is the Pythagorean theorem. All right, so in case you've forgotten uh, what the Pythagorean theorem is, uh, it works with right triangles. So what I want to do is create a right triangle out of this. Okay, so if you've forgotten what the Pythagorean theorem says, it says, um, if you have this distance, which we'll call, I don't know, A, if you've got this distance, B, um, so in other words, the uh, horizontal distance is A, vertical distance is B, we could figure out what the diagonal distance is, C, called the hypotenuse because it's opposite the right triangle, it's the longest side of the right triangle. Well, there's Pythagorean theorem. So Pythagoras says if you square the legs, find their sum, it's equal to the square of the hypotenuse. Okay, so that's what Pythagoras says, right? A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So many students know this and they're exposed to this in geometry. All right, well, how does this formula come about from Pythagoras? Well, if you really think about this distance right here, well, first, we've got to know where this point is right here. All right, well, that point has the same x value as this point, but it has the same y value of this point. All right, well, I'd like to know what the distance is between those two points. Well, they have the same x value, it's just they have different heights. So if I want to figure out what the distance is between them, I'm just subtracting their heights. So I would say that this length of this segment is going to be y2 minus y1. Likewise, I'd like to figure out what's the length of A, or this segment. Well, these two points, this point and this point, have the same y value. The only thing different they have are the x values. So if I want to find that length, I'm going to subtract the x values. So I'm going to take x2 minus x1. Okay, and usually when we're talking about 
distances, I'm going to call this D for distance instead of C for hypotenuse. Okay, so our, the characters in this story are going to look a little different. Instead of using A, B, and C, I'm going to use this expression, this expression, and this expression to form the relationship. Okay, so what does the relationship say? It says that if you have x2 minus x1, you square it, and you find the sum with y2 minus y1 squared. Okay, so that's just this length squared. It's going to be equal to the hypotenuse squared. Okay, so instead of having a squared plus b squared equals c squared, I've got this monster squared, this monster squared, and the sum of those squares is equal to the distance squared. Well, instead of leaving this d squared, I'm going to take the square root of both sides. So I take the square root of the left and square root of the right. I'm going to be left with this formula. x2 minus x1, y2 minus y1. In other words, I have the distance formula. So what happened to the square on the left side? Well, when I took the square root here of both sides, the square and the square root canceled. So that's where the formula comes from. It's just the Pythagorean theorem. All right, let's actually start using it, this formula in our next section. All right, so this is our third section. And now what we'd like to do is actually calculate um, a situation where we actually find the distance between two points. So let's say we are given two points and uh, we'll calculate the distance between them. Okay, so let's say we have these two points. Uh, let's find the distance. Well, you know, of course, some people draw a picture while they uh, do this. I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to show you how to plug those into the formula. Well, first thing you have to do is decide which point is going to be your first point, which one's going to be your second point. And, and it really doesn't matter. I could call this the second point and this one the first point. It doesn't matter. So I'm just going to take them in order. I'm going to say that this is our first point. So that must be x1, y1. And this is our second point, x2, y2. All right, so how do you use the formula? All right, well, I'm going to plug all this into the formula. All right, so this is what the formula looks like except now I'm going to put in some numbers. So it says i got to subtract the x values. So the x2 is first. And then I have to put the x1. And over here I'm going to put the y2 first. So that would be negative 3. And I'm going to have to put the y1 second. So I just put in the values, but of course the formula says I have to subtract those values. So I'm going to subtract, subtract. Okay, so let's play cleanup. So, of course, I'm going to do everything that's in the parentheses first. 10 minus uh, 7 is 3. And what do I have over here? Negative 3 minus 1 is negative 4. Okay, so I'm just slowly cleaning up. 3 squared, 3 times 3 is 9. Negative 4 squared, negative 4 times negative 4 is 16. Okay, so now I'm going to add 9 and 16. I'm going to get 25. And we, of course, know the square root of 25 is 5. And there you have it. I now have the distance between the two points. Okay, let's try another example. All right, this is section 4. Let's take a look at a second example. So uh, let's say we start off now with two different points. Let's say we've got 2, negative 9... And let's say we've got negative 5, comma, 4. Okay, again, we've got to decide which one of these points is going to be point 1 and point 2. I'm going to be a little different to, for this problem. I'm going to say that this is my x2, y2, because it doesn't matter. I could call this point 2 if I want. And let's say that this is then my x1, y1. Okay, so again, I'm going to throw this into the formula. So the formula has this long expression. I've got to put
put some x values down. Okay, so now I'm here going to take 2 and negative 5 are the x values. And let's see, now the y values are next, so I'm going to take negative 9 and 4. Okay, so it says that when you write down these values, you then have to subtract them. So I'm going to put a subtraction sign there, subtraction sign there. You'll notice that I have a pair of double negatives. That makes a plus. So 2 minus negative 5 is really 2 plus 5. That's 7. Okay. Over here I've got negative 9 minus 4. That's negative 13. Okay. Next, let's take 7 and square it. So 7 times 7 is 49. Next, I've got to take negative 13 and square it, so 13 times 13 is 169. Yeah, let's write it all vertically at this point. So let's now add what's inside the radical, and I get 218. And of course, I'm going to take the square root of 18, and it's plugging out of the calculator a irrational number that goes on forever. There's no repeating pattern. So it's 14.7648 blah blah blah. There's no pattern. Okay, so there's no pattern. It just goes on. So now what we usually do is round this. And um, I'm going to round this to the nearest tenth. So is this closer to 14.7 or 14.8? And of course because of the 6 we would say it's closer to 14.8. And there you have it. There's the distance between those two points. All right, make sure you go back to mathguide.com. Check out our other interactive quizzes, instructional videos, and, of course, our uh, text-based lessons. Take care.